All right, guys, welcome to the first of many videos um, where I'm pretty much going to be going over my personal trades, um, specifically EU, and I'm pretty much going to be discussing liquidity inducement theorem, uh, which is a relatively new concept that has entered the trading space. Um, so pretty much I'm going to try and keep these videos to around 10 minutes, just going over um, most of my analysis from high time frame all the way to low time frame. Uh, pretty much discussing whether or not my bias will be short or long, um, going all the way into some of the lit entries um, that many people are pretty much inspired by right now, because uh, REM's form of trading uh, is, pretty, is pretty amazing. However, most that understand REM's form of trading understand that it's just repackaged ICT concepts. Um, anyways, to go ahead and start off yeah. with this analysis and to uh, basically go right into it or actually before i go into it i'm here with uh <laughs> my friend kagan uh who is learning from me right now um so if he's asking any questions hopefully any of the questions he has will answer uh, right. some of the questions that you guys might have as well right because i'm 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 here to basically ask the questions that you guys might have um so and if you know you guys have questions of your own please feel free to you know uh, leave them in the comments or message us personally and we'd be glad to to help you out even more because that's the whole point of this just to, to educate absolutely so let's go ahead and run through everything as quickly as we possibly can here just to give you guys an overview because i don't want to make these videos too long um starting off on the weekly chart i wanted to get my high time frame bias kind of all set up um, from a structural standpoint, we can see over here that on all our time frames we are bearish. So from the weekly, we can see that we just had this break of structure uh, within recent weeks to tell me that the weekly has gone bearish. We can see coordinated in the blue dots here that the daily has also turned bearish. And if we go into the four hour as well, we can see with these green vectors here uh, that the four hour is also bearish, telling me that all of high time frame is primarily bearish, if not all, right? Um, if we look to see where price has came from, we can see that price has came from a weekly supply after sweeping two powerful points of liquidity and then price retesting those highs and now continuing the trend. So what I've been seeing now is not only just the bearish higher time frames, but I've also been seeing what we call price cycle inducement. Price cycle inducement is when we see three large vectors or three large impulses uh, in any given direction. And once these impulses kind of complete and or it stop hunts the third wave, as I have marked out here, once that stop hunt occurs, that's when we start looking for the opposite direction. So as you can see from the buy side here, we ran into this weekly supply after three strong price movements right? These three vectors moving into the supply to go short. So I'm now expecting the same to the downside to where we now have three cycles of drop, right? And I expect this POI to get stop hunted to here to make what? Our peak formation lows. Let's talk about why this is more valid than this one as of right now. If we move our way into the daily, we can see that this POI is stuck within what? all of this liquidity, right? All of this is liquidity that needs to be swept in order for price to go higher, right? So this to me may not be such a valid zone for price to have a reaction off of. We have to keep in mind that we are in a weekly demand, which is all of this area here, which price is in. So we can expect somewhat of a minor retracement and or pullback because price has entered that area. However, where I do wanna see the main reaction from is down here because again, this is inducement to this POI down here. And this is the pure imbalance that caused the move. This was the break of structure caused by this POI right over here. So that is primarily my high time frame bias. Uh, there are other things to go over as well, but those are things that I go over um, with my students individually. This is just a little recap. And I promise if you were to watch all of my videos in the future, you'll probably catch on concepts quicker than most. So quick question, quick question here. Yes. So this is, you know, you went from the weekly, daily to the four hour. So every every day you trade um, for every week, I guess, do you usually keep the same um, outline 
for the whole week or every day do you usually go back and basically redo what you just did just now so generally i keep my higher time frame the same so anywhere on the weekly or daily i'll generally keep it the same throughout the week it'll generally stay within its weekly cycle and weekly mm-hmm. cycle is something that i'm probably going to be going over uh at some point during this video uh what i will change is time frames that are going from the four hour down because structure is usually ever changing um, from those time frames. You're rarely going to see the daily time frame change in a given week. However, it is possible and it will happen. And if it does, then uh, we just have to accommodate for it. Um, but anyways, to move into the analysis is kind of our high time frame bias, as you can see, looking back from all the way 2018, all the way to 2021. Now we can kind of move in a little deeper, kind kind of start to dissect what we see going on within price here. If we move in to the four hour, all right, we have discovered what? We now know that our entire high time frame bias is bearish. However, we know from an inducement perspective that our weekly, daily, and now the four hour all have three cycles of drop. Right. Once we have three cycles of drop, we expect what? What we expect the market to chop, right? So, after three cycles of drop on any given time frame, we expect the market to chop. So here we see on the four hour. Um, Again, we had the three cycles of drop representing that price might reverse at some point in time. Now to get to where everyone wants to see, everyone wants to see how to ping pong price. Let's just go ahead and jump right in to 15 minute. Today was one of the worst days. However, it was still a profitable day and we were still able to catch numerous one to 10 RRs uh, within this session. This session, as you can see, was very choppy. We generally want to trade price after it has uh, cut the Asian highs or the Asian lows and or what most people refer to as the sweep of the Asian highs or lows. Um, yesterday's volume uh, kicked in during the Asian session, as you can see, because there was a news release. And because of that, price was stagnant for the rest of the day. Um, however, majority of the time, what we're looking for and you can kind of see it right here. Here's the Asian session. We saw that price came from a downtrend and we generally will use the Asian box as liquidity or inducement. In this case, in terms of what I like to refer to as the daily cycle, uh, because price is coming from a downtrend, we are looking for the stop hunts of the Asian highs, right? And we're looking for something from the past for it to mitigate, for it to continue its trend lower. Because this right here is the manipulation from the price's overall trend. Well, this is the price manipulation on that given day for price to return to a discount within the previous trend for it to continue that trend. Hopefully that makes sense. From a visual standpoint, I, I really hope that makes sense because that's what really matters. Uh, Kagan, does that make sense for you as well? Yeah, no, that that definitely makes sense for me. Maybe um, go into more uh, detail about uh, Asian being, you know, liquidity. Right, so to get into some liquidity inducement, theorem topics, there's uh, three different types of inducement. There's minor inducement, medium inducement, and major inducement. Um, the Asian highs and lows kind of represent medium inducement, right? So once something is induced, right, it simply means that liquidity is just being swept and or it is uh, pretty much enticing a POI, meaning making a POI valid for the most part. So as you can see right here, this is all 15 minute liquidity, right? And if this 15 minute liquidity gets swept into here, I expect something else to get swept in this POI for price to go lower because we are coming from a, a downtrend and this would be medium inducement to the POI um, with all this liquidity buildup. Uh, therefore, I'd actually be looking to go short considering our high time frame bias our weekly cycle inducements um, and whatnot. So what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, so how how would one decipher between um, a valid 
um, section of inducement instead of it being, you know, just regular consolidation? Well, in reality, there's inducement uh, going on everywhere on price. It's really figuring out which inducement is valid too. Uh, most people just assume that because of POI is being induced, it's valid. That is not the case. Uh, okay. Just because something is being induced, we have to understand the reasoning behind that inducement. Does that inducement match our high time frame bias? Um, does it match the lower time frame trend? Um, because if these things do not match up, then price is going to go the opposite direction in which you think it might go. Um, the real crux of what I really want to go over today is really on the one minute chart. because that's really primarily all you need to look at when you're, uh, trying to ping pong price. Uh, we only traded the London session last night. We didn't get to the New York session. Uh, well, in reality, we traded Frankfurt and London because I like to trade the opening Asian POIs because I find a lot of success with that. Um, but going back into liquidity inducement theorem, what we generally look for in the Asian session is where that initial, initial trend line liquidity buildup started, or at least that's what I do. I know a lot of people will do it differently. A lot of people will take this liquidity and call that inducement. And basically what these trend lines are telling me is that, okay, there's buying occurring all along this trend, right? Telling me that price is likely to induce buying above these Asian highs, right? So this is inducement buying to stop hunt these Asian highs right here before price makes its real move down, right? Generally, this move happens within London. However, we saw it during our dead zone um, which for me is between 5.30 and 8 a.m. Because uh, I live in the U.S. So yeah, this is our liquidity trend line. And this over here is also our inducement trend line as well. So what can we expect if we have inducement selling going on and we have this breakout of the trend line? We expect this breakout to induce what? We expect this trend line to induce buying, right? So when inducement buys... When people are expected to buy, we are actually doing the complete opposite and sell. Uh, a lot of people are probably asking, how did I get this refined entry? Uh, this refined entry is kind of what I go over with my students. I do not mind going over uh, where the main move is coming from. So if you were primarily just to learn from this video, there's a good chance your stops would probably be up here at 9.6 pips, as most would be. However, after learning refinements, you would understand that this is actually where you would take your position to achieve a 1 to 13 RR. If price were to continue to sweep the lows, you would have grabbed around 1 to 48 RR. Do I win every single trade? Absolutely not. And you'll see in most coming videos that I actually lose the majority of my trades. However, as you can see, if my RR exceeds to almost 1 to 48 that means I'm risking 1% to make 48%, then I could lose up to 47 trades, have one profitable trade, and still be profitable. Most will eventually learn that this is all just a mind game. It's more psychological than it is skill-based. Right? And I'm sure many talk about it all the time. Anyways, going back to the actual analysis, to give you guys a hint of how I got this refinement, look for where liquidity is being swept. Right? If you can understand liquidity concepts, you can understand how liquidity moves, you can understand which liquidity point needs to get taken out in order for this certain area right here to get mitigated before falling, you'll understand how to ping pong price. If you can understand that all these are inducement cells, right, that have now just caused buying to occur because this is the breakout for buying, we know to go short here. How do we know to reverse our position and go long again? Well, look, a 15-minute internal POI was made. I know that this is going to create what? Internal structure. And look, I have my refinement on the one minute here to know that, okay, price is going to hit this area for, to at least meet my requirement of a one to three risk to reward. Um, so so where, where at this point... <clears throat> when you enter in 1%, you, you risk 1% here. Where is your first um, take profit area? So I always like to target structure. Uh, the first high or low structure 
on the 15 or five minute time frame when I'm trading this particular style, I'm literally looking for that first structural point. Uh, with these cells, I was looking actually to reverse right around here because, again, if you're ping-ponging price and you're sticking uh, to my rules of how I trade, this would be a reversal point you'd know to close your entire position and to go long. Um, I actually stayed in these longs all the way to, be, to break even. However, my first TP was what? These structural highs. Right. As soon as I hit these structural highs, which are right around here, it still allowed me to achieve a one to three RR. And I pulled just around 20 percent of my position and left 80 percent of my position riding to these Asian eyes here, which were TP2 to allow me to get a one to five ratio. Right. And after I pulled out another uh, 50 percent just around here, I I had just about like I want to say 20 or 30 percent running at that point I can't entirely remember before price went against me and actually knocked out this trade break even um if we go into our next trade we can understand what we have created another 15 minute POI that has received order flow from this 15 minute POI right this is where the money transfer occurred so I can understand validity to this POI. However, I understand that these Asian highs still need to be taken out. So, right? this so is I guess still my, my question right there is how important is uh, order flow when, when you know um, the Asian highs still have to be taken out? So just to go over order flow concepts in general, the, the best time you should be trading the only time you should really be trading order flow is really on the lower time frames i like to refer to it as m1 continuations or extreme m1 order flow mm -hmm. um those are generally your most powerful order flow confirmations um with this way of trading if you're looking at every single inducement i know that this poi is actually valid because it did what it swept liquidity previous highs of the day here right our 15 minute poi was made we failed to make lower lows however because there was order flow stacking right here sometimes order flow is also used as liquidity right if this order flow is used as liquidity this tells me okay if we hit this poi and sell perhaps we should take out all this order flow and come mitigate the asian lows down here so i wasn't upset with this trade even though we hit break even uh, we didn't even uh, hit our first TP, which was down at these structural lows here. Um, but I was happy enough to go break even due to the fact that we hit our first initial breakage structure, which was here. All right, and then price came back up to hit break even. But that's okay because we were stacked in these buys over here. And you can see uh, that our TP or that our SL almost got hit, but it didn't, but we we're still able to reach our first target at these structural highs for a one to four. And then we we're then able to hit our second target up here for a one to seven. Guys, keep in mind, this is one of our worst days on the market. Generally, so, we like to see moves coming out of the Asian, but it was a very slow day yesterday. So if you want to quickly just um, jot down the the pips that, that you gained and lost just so people have an understanding of that we lost um, oh, those sure, initial ones. Right, right, because this is right. kind of falsely showing how, <laughs> how much we've actually made. Right. This, this right here on this position, this was the only position that was actually good throughout the day. We actually hit a 1 to 13. 13. And, you, and on every trade we take, it's always uh, one percent of your account. It's never, uh, never more, never less, because you can't, you can't bankrupt yourself. And you if you really justify sometimes which one is uh, higher, more higher probability right. than another trade, that is, that comes down to intuition and your comfortability level of deciding when to risk more. If you do decide to risk three percent rather than one percent, and that three percent trade loses, well, then if you go back to trading just one percent you're kind of throwing yourself back back off again it's better to stay consistent and disciplined rather than switching up how yeah. you're risking um yeah. your portfolio yeah. 
But yeah, this one here, our first target, we were able to hit one to three, then one to five, and then break even. So one to three for the first target, one to five for the second target, and then we went break even because uh, we did not achieve TP3, but that is still fine. Uh, this trade right here on TP1, we were able to hit one to five and then one to seven and then break even. And then this one right here was just purely a break even trade. However, I'm not upset with it. All right. So these were the trades I was able to grab in the London session. Um, if you guys want me to go over some of these concepts with you individually, please DM me. I'm going to put all my information in the bio in this video. Um, make sure to just uh, go ahead and do whatever you want to this video. Like it, dislike it, subscribe, <laughs> do whatever you want to it. Uh, to be honest, just to get it, give it some attention. Um, and yeah, it pretty much covers this video. Hopefully you guys learned something new and hopefully I can yeah. Continuously teach you guys how to ping pong price, uh, and especially USD, because that's pretty much what I right. remain to focus on. And so, just to add on to that, um, we're going to be using this this channel um, to really talk about the the trades that we take, uh, certain um, theories that 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 we're using, and also as as a way for for if you guys want to learn more about uh, certain uh, ideas you you know put them in the comments and we're like we'll make videos uh specifically for that we're also uh on instagram um posting our our profits when when they happen all all that fun stuff and we're also uh on discord as well right we're gonna link everything in the bio for you guys we are, we are. again this is also a journal for us to kind of keep us updated on how our trading is doing and you guys can pretty much see our progress and see how well we advanced through this new era of trading as well. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Peace.